Let's have a look what I've got in the back of my van today. Look at these. So, what these are, house mice, okay? Not field mice, very much different. Now we caught these at this property last week. Um, they've actually been in my freezer ever since, believe it or not. Just so I can do this video for you guys. I'm a bit mental, aren't I? So, they're still a little bit frozen, but as you can see, distinguishing features, tiny little eyes, they don't need big eyes because they don't actually go outside. They live symbiotically with humans now. They say that if we were to die out, so would house mice, believe it or not. It's amazing, isn't it? But biggest difference to spot is the fact that they haven't got a white belly. So you can see, so they've all got the little tiny eyes, little slanty eyes. There's a big mommy one, I think. And again, no white belly, gray bellies. Sometimes they're nearly black and they're usually quite small. This one's quite a big one. These are the, the average size of, of house mice, as you can see. And they've been caught in these snapback traps. So the other thing that gives them away a bit as well, they've got a tail that's a lot more like rat-like. So it's actually all scaly. I'm picking that up, Rick. Now that is a house mouse. Poisons, or proper word, rodenticides, should not, should not, I'll repeat it one more time, should not ever be used on field mice. Field mice are the favourite diet of uh, barn owls, loads of different owls, badgers, you name it. If it's a protected species, they probably eat them. Go and check on the back of your packet of poison, check what the label says, and the label will say for use on house mice and rats, not field mice. And that's why any professional company, right, that's sticking within the laws and doing their job right, should be using traps as the first line of defence. Usually, it's field mice. 95% of the jobs in the West Midlands that we go to, we go to a lot of mouse jobs, they're field mice. No poison. Has to be done with traps and tracking dust. The added problem with this job, okay, in fact, if we just walk around here, so we know our client is one of these end houses if i look at this block over here rick so our our clients is kind of in like one of the end houses we know that someone else saw our beautiful truck the other day and they brought us up and they live right down the far end and they've got them in there as well so that tells me that this whole block is infested with house mice not that block or that block could be someone else's block who knows but you should always always start any mouse treatment by using traps and then identify what they are. Rick is actually, you know, I think what we should do is put a picture of a field mouse right here and you'll be able to see what the difference is. So right here, there's going to be a field mouse because we've got that kind of technology. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll soon find out. Um, let's go and see what we found. Because we left um, traps. We put poison down as well because we think this is a major infestation. Lots and lots of them. These mice, by the way, they are breeding machines. They can literally go from one pregnant female to 2,000 mice in one year. And that's why sometimes it's necessary to use poison. The fact that we know that all the length of this whole block of building means there's lots of mice here. Lots and lots of mice. So let's go and see what we've got on the trail cam, what poison has gone missing, and if we've got any more in the traps. Let's go and find out. And here we are inside the house with house mice. Okay, so what we did, we put a trail cam down last week. We've had a quick look on the trail cam. In fact, we'll show you some footage right here, right now. I don't know that will be on the link after this, or it will literally be right here. Um, on the trail cam, what we can see is that the mice here have already become trap shy. So we put three mice last week. We're using peanut butter, which is usually our go-to for house mice and field mice when we're using traps. And we've just watched the mice coming literally up to the traps and going, oh, peanut butter, that killed one of our friends. We ain't eating this. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be giving them an extra choice. So what we're going to be using is our favourite. No product placement here. There are other spreads available, but uh, Nutella's pretty much one of the best ones. And when you're making, putting them in the traps, it's very important that you try and get that in the well itself. Obviously, what you don't want to do is use your £100 plus Leatherman knife. You should have bought your proper stuff for you, shouldn't you? But anything for Facebook, anyone, anything for YouTube, eh? Anything for YouTube. 
Okay, and then we'll do the next one. You can see the well on these, look. See that little well in the centre? And that's where we're gonna we're gonna fill that up. So the mice have to literally lean across. Hopefully they'll put a finger or a hand on the treadle. Have to load that in there. It's also very important as well that when you're laying the traps, I'll do with these two straight away. So what we do, set the trap, make sure it works. What I do, I just hold it on the kill on the on this part here. Just use that finger just to make sure that everything's working a couple of times. Because they can sometimes get jammed. You don't want them getting jammed. And then what you do, so this is the kill plate here, the treadle plate. This part, and that's the kill bar that comes down. <laughs> Thank you. No, no need to get that excited with the sirens, is there? It's only a mouse trap. So what we do, though, it's very important that this part goes against the skirting board like that. Okay, because mice, what they'll always do is they will always go down a skirting board or a wall. And that's basically because their uh, predators usually will be atta attacking from above, owls, things like that, birds of prey. Um, but if they've only got to concentrate on one side, they can use twice as much brain power on watching from that one side. So that's why they always scurry along your skirting boards and then disappear. It's horrible the way they do that, isn't it? So I'll set this other one. And then we'll see what we get next week. Um, if, they, if we don't start catching loads on these, I'm going to use something called contact gel as well. The other thing I'm going to do, Rick, is I'm going to change the poison that we're using, the rodenticide. It shouldn't really be called poison, it's rodenticide. Um, we're going to change from the grain that we're using and we're going to use like a, what we call a pasta bait, I'm sure, like these sachets. But they've got they're more oily. Um, it might be more palatable to them this time of the year. It's actually winter time in England right now, um, so we'll be using these instead of the grain bait. And then, if all else doesn't work, we might have to use what we call contact gel, which basically is a, a sticky gel that gets on their belly fur. And then, when they clean each other in the nest, they ingest the poison that way. But that really is like a, a last. A last ditch attempt basically at getting rid of them because house mice real problem they really really are a problem and if you're lucky enough to get them well we'll see how long this takes to get rid of in this block because i think the whole block is just full of them absolutely full of them but let's see if we can tempt them out with a bit of chocolate spread and the thing is we don't know what everyone else in the in the, uh, in the block is doing do we that's part of the the challenge really because if you've got a detached house you know what you're putting down you know everything that's going on when it's a terraced house like these well you don't know what your neighbors are doing and apparently one of the neighbors here by the way another little interesting thing here one of the neighbors is catching them live in these i'm gonna have to do this i hate doing this humane traps they are not humane they are terrible ideas okay really really stressful to the animals if we were to use them we'd have to check those traps okay these are the live capture ones because what are you going to do with it are you going to go and release it somewhere where well, it has to be at least two miles away okay that poor animal has been stuck inside there panicking and worrying it's also an offense i believe i'm sure people in the comments will, will say if i'm wrong or not but i'm pretty sure i'm right because what you're doing is you're releasing a pest species on someone else's land even if it's in the woods someone owns those woods and they don't want your pests being released out there. So just another thing to bear in mind. These, although they kill the mouse, it's bang, they're dead. Okay, and hopefully we'll have that on film next week. Uh, hopefully, hopefully. But mice are just so clever. Totally different kettle of fish when you're dealing with these as opposed to field mice. Field mice are a bit dumb, really. Like, I was going to say like country folk. <laughs> I was just about to say, say <laughs> I won't say country folk, but uh, you know what I'm saying, you know. And the thing is with mice as well, they're, what, they're nibblers. See, a rat will find some food and the, the whole pack of rats. What was I saying about check your traps? Look. I wonder where these are made. I think it might be China. More rubbish to go into the landfill, eh? Basically, you can see the principle. So, mouse traps against the skirting boards, because uh, that's where the mice will tend to travel. Um, we're going to change the grain bait. 
which we wouldn't be using unless we knew it was house mice. If it was field mice, we wouldn't be using this. So don't do it yourself, okay? And what we'll be doing, we'll put these in little trays and we'll swap in that and we'll see if we can get some takes on that. Because otherwise it's desperate times and desperate measures and all the rest of it. So we'll swap those. Who would have thought the mice were such picky eaters then? Crazy. And they've got a row of houses to choose from what they want to eat. Exactly. They? And if you've got someone in the block who's a bit horrible and a bit messy, well, and there's loads of free food for them to eat, well, you can imagine it's, you know, if they've got a food source. Let me tell you something else while we're on it as well. Um, one pregnant female house mouse can turn into 2,000 mice in one year. Okay, as far as I know, they're the only mammal that can actually get pregnant while it's pregnant. So the gestation period, I believe, is uh, six weeks. But at four weeks of being pregnant, they can actually get re-impregnated. Um, they really don't care about who they're going to have sex with either. If it's brothers, cousins, moms, dads, it's, all, it's a one for all with these guys and girls. Um, so really are horrible little critters, aren't they? Really are. All right, um, and then we're going to put the camera back in and we'll see what we find next week. Well, the first thing I notice in here is one of the telltale signs that it's house mice and not field mice, remember, big difference between the two with treatments and stuff, is the biscuity smell and they really do stink house mice, whereas field mice don't really smell of anything apart from nature and fields. But house mice smell like, like a, if you was to get a biscuit barrel, pop the top off, stick your nose in, that's what house mice smell like. Uh, so what we've got is... Oh, we've got one. So we've changed all this to a different bait. We've kept peanut butter, but we've also got chocolate sauce, which was kind of working in other areas of the house. But this one, one baby one, oh, as you can see. It's tiny, that is. Tiny little eyes. It doesn't need big eyes like a field mouse um, because they live inside. You Can, can you pick up its... Uh, Look at all those, that's brilliant, isn't it? The, 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 uh, the whiskers. whiskers. And they can actually tell the shape of things and all sorts with, with these whiskers in pitch black. <laughs> well, he's kind of cute, isn't it? But Right. Well, what we need to do is we need to st stick the game up, really. We need to really s step the game up, I should say. And the only way we can do that and get any kind of form of control in this situation is to use a contact gel. Um, we're going to be using Vertox from Belgi uh, Pelgar, or Pelgar, Pelgar, I think it's pronounced, Vertex contact gel. And basically what this does, we can't just put it down willy-nilly, and it's literally a last line of defence for us. But what we'll be doing, we'll be putting down masking tape or paper tape where we know the mice are coming up we can see where they're coming through um they might be coming through this hole here for say for ivan's sake so what we'll do we'll put some of this in there then put the gel on top and they're all around these pipe holes and what happens is when the mouse crawls across it this gel this sticky gel i'll show you it this sticky gel which is professional use only basically <laughs> awesome stuff was it hair gel? <laughs> you want to put this on your hair, Ricky. Um, <laughs> basically what happens is mice, they're always cleaning themselves. So they'll get that on their belly fur and then they'll start cleaning themselves. And they do that by using their mouth and they'll ingest it that way. But it's quite a strong um, anticoagulant. So it's stronger, I believe, a lot stronger, I believe, than the, uh, the baits that they will eat like that. Because the other thing is as well, when they get back into the nest... They'll all start cleaning each other and they'll all start re-ingesting this. So that as they clean each other, they'll be re-ingesting each other's poison. So that's what we're going to do now. There's little point in having the traps down in all honesty. Um, they haven't touched any of the poison. In fact, we, we just looked downstairs in one of the cupboards that we're going to do the same thing in downstairs. And there was actually a mouse poo on the top of one of the sachets. So they've been there. They're just not interested because they know, eat this. And it's all over. Whereas with contact gel, we're hoping, well, no one should have used this in this block, so they won't know what it is. 
and they haven't got much choice really than to walk unless they start hovering. Who knows with house mice, they could do. We'll have hover mice next. Um, I'm sure we'll have some interesting footage off the trail cam as well. And that will probably be coming up now, maybe. <laughs> but if you want to see some exciting trail cam footage, if you look here and you watch it on mobile, you'll see a link to uh, rats and how clever they can be um, with some of our trail cam footage. So let's get this down, Rick. Yeah, there's no point in leaving these down, is there? No. Really. So here we are then. This is the last little bit. As you can see, what we've used is paper tape. So we put paper tape all around the edges because as you know if you've been listening that uh, mice will tend to go towards the skirting boards so they don't get attacked by by enemies <laughs> birds of prey foxes cats things like that so they don't have to worry about being attacked from one side so where they're coming up through the pipe holes look anywhere they come up they're going to get the contact gel on them um just one of the last place in here put that on there we've also got a bit of tape on there look because it's very important that you remove this stuff when we've got rid of the mice. Uh, now we're going to go and do this again in the kitchen. Uh, going to put the trail cam down in here and hopefully we're going to see the mice coming up in here and then we'll keep on doing this until there's no more mice basically. This stuff's pretty potent though. I'll give them that from Pelgar. Uh, Vertox contact gel but like I say professional use only. Let's go do the same all over again. That was sort of time consuming. Good job we don't have to use this very often. I think in the 11 years I've been a pest controller, I've only ever used contact gel about five or six times. So it just goes to show you how difficult this job is. Let's go. Here we are. So let's have a look. Has the contact gel done what we want it to do? We should be having a look on the camera in a minute and we'll probably put a little clip of that right here so you can actually see the mouse coming out of the hole and getting the contact gel on it but uh, I know it's been here because if I look here look Rick you can see little tail marks in the uh, so if I point to one just here look so that there and that there that's little tail marks where the mice have come up over the edge through that hole there look through the contact gel what will be happening now is we might see this on the camera as well and um, we'll see the mouse ingesting the rodenticide by cleaning itself right here and now it'll go back into the nest and it'll take the rodenticide with it on its belly fur uh, the other mice will clean each other so they'll start ingesting it and that starts like a domino effect throughout the whole the whole nest the problem on this side is it's not just this house so this is a house that's in a row of 10 other houses, as you probably as you, you will have already seen on this video. Um, so really, we're kind of trying to take out every mouse in the whole block from one place. And part of the issue with this is when everyone in every other house has had mice like this with its house mice, and they've all been using different traps and baits and poisons and God knows what else, old wives tails and peppermint oil and all sorts. Well, Every time that the mice see one of these things and get wise to it in someone else's house, well, we can't use that in our arsenal. So really, not to sound too big-headed or put anyone down in any way, shape or form, if the first person in this row, as soon as they discovered they'd got mice and they'd have called us out, we'd have done it in the correct way. The mice wouldn't have got wise to traps, poisons, things like this. We've got trap shyness, we've got bait shyness. We could have um, resistance to the poisons as well. They can't be resistant to our poison, uh, our professional use stuff, but stuff you can buy from the shops, bromodialone, things like that. It's probably having very little effect on these mice, but it'll make them feel ill. And they, they, these mice are clever enough to put two, two and two together and uh, work out that don't eat that because it makes you ill. Um, so luckily, we, as professionals, we've got contact gel. and We can use contact gel. Uh, but it's professional use only. I hope this has been enlightening to you. In fact, what we're going to do as well is uh, we're going to do a little video all about the difference between field mice and house mice so you know. And you pest controllers out there because we know you get a bit confused as well. So don't use poisons on field mice, only on house mice. 
And in all honesty, look how long this job is going to take. If they'd have called us in the first place and got professional advice in, this wouldn't be happening now. When we went home yesterday and we checked the trail cam footage from this little uh, boiler cupboard, we realised we've had to come back because these house mice, they are so, so smart. We'll show you the clip now of why we need to make the area with the contact gel wider than it actually is because these mice are smart. Look at what they're doing. It's going to be a video right now to follow. We're going to go and put some more tape down and some more contact gel. Just watch this. It just shows you how clever the mice are. But also, there's a pipe in there as well. We're going to put a bit on the top of that pipe. They've never used that pipe before in all the weeks we've been coming here. Then all of a sudden, to avoid the contact gel, they're going up the, up the, uh, the bit of pipe. So we're going to put a bit of tape on there and we're going to put some contact gel on there as well. We will win, we always win. Here we go. So you've seen how clever these little house mice are and you can see what we've done now so i'll put some tape on this where you could see on this bit of pipe so we're going to put some some gel on here and i'll put a bit more on there in a moment but then we've also made this little bit here double the thickness in here and a little bit more in here so we use the spatula and make it nice and thick <laughs> isn't it amazing how clever these little these little uh, mice are there. So let's see if they can work out how to get across this bit now. <laughs> I, I don't think what we're going to see on the next bit of footage, but uh, this this should be our uh, the end of this video, though. I think. Okay, Rick. As you can see now, as you've seen off the videos as well, the trail cam videos. So if they go up on here now, they're going to get the gel on them. They come out of this little hole that one that was jumping over the little gap well he's gonna have to jump a long way now <laughs> and that is how you deal with house mice <laughs>